Gavin and I play percussion in the UCD Symphony Orchestra. My name is Danny and I also play percussion in the UCD Symphony Orchestra. I really like the music you play every year and also all the friends you make. What about you Danny? <laughs> she keeps making me laugh. This is this is really hard. That's what I like about this orchestra because everybody kind of just knows each other and everybody kind of grew up playing music there. So if it wasn't for this orchestra, we probably wouldn't see the same people. We probably wouldn't get to actually play music anymore. So the uh, UCD Symphony Orchestra began life as UCD Sinfonia, and um, that happened because Kieran Quilly came to see me um, about ten years ago now, two thousand and two and uh, he proposed that he would start an orchestral ensemble here in the university which would be devoted to the uh, standard repertoire and to other kinds of symphonic music. The, uh, the, the beginnings were fairly modest. Uh, I think our first concert we had around 19 players in the orchestra and I think the audience was roughly the same dimensions at that time. Uh, but within a year and a half, two years, uh, built up to substantial size, 60, 70 players. Uh, some notable pieces we did in the, in the first couple of years were in Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, Dvorak's Eighth Symphony. We also performed um, a certain mass with the uh, college choir. And uh, it's just kind of developed uh, since that time, both in terms of quality and quantity. I think the orchestra has evolved um, Dramatically, I think is the best way I can describe it. Um, I mean, I've been at UCD for ten years now, um, in which time um, the thing has, has just blossomed, uh, and uh, it's extraordinary the extent to which it's flourished. I think. I mean, it's gone from being um, something that is entirely internal to UCD to to an, or uh, an orchestra that can perform in the National Concert Hall and fill the National Concert Hall and play, you know. Um, very large, challenging uh, late 19th, early 20th century repertoire. The orchestra is uh, approaching its 10th year anniversary and uh, it's, it's, it's a nice time to kind of look back and reflect on what we've done. I mean, you, look, you look at certain highlights, you think of concerts, you think of pieces, you think of uh, soloists, you think of audiences. Uh, things, I mean, like selling out the concert hall for the, uh, the Russian Festival concert a couple of years ago. Uh, the Americana concert when, uh, when the orchestra played the Symphonic Dances in West Side Story. It was a piece that maybe a university orchestra has no right to be able to play, but uh, it, it, was, it was played uh, with, uh, with great confidence and assurance and panache. Um, things like Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony and uh, a lot of the big works of Sanson's Organ Symphony. Um, the 1812 with the choir that the repertoire which the orchestra explores uh, is an extremely interesting one and, and this must be put down entirely to Kieran Quilly's enormous ability and skill and imagination in his programming. It's one of the strongest features of the UCD Symphony Orchestra that the programming is so exciting. It tends to divide into, into sort of two areas. One is a consistent and gradual exploration of the symphonic standard repertoire and associated pieces with it. So for example, a concert given in, in the National Concert Hall last uh, April, uh, or perhaps it was the April before that, memory is case you now, but it was a concert recently given in the Concert Hall wherein the program consisted of um, uh, Russian music, uh, Norwegian music, Greek piano concerto, Stravinsky's Fireboard Suite, in other words, standard works of the late 19th and early 20th century repertory. Uh, I think the first concert they gave in the National Concert Hall actually um, and uh, they played Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony um, in the second half which is I mean such a difficult thing to come together for an orchestra for all kinds of reasons I mean it has to coordinate the organist apart from anything else and, um, the uh, uh, scherzo has pianos and, um, which need to be coordinated with everything else it's a complex piece to bring together um, and I think I think that's that performance for me was really important because it's you know it's, it seemed to me that um, it, it marked just how far the orchestra had come in, in in the previous years that it was capable of doing that um, and uh, a lot of what what the orchestra has done since seems to have been built on that. Now you can do that. You can go away and you can play the Firebird and you can play a Shostakovich symphony and and so on and so forth. Um, and that, uh, you know, that's not a challenge to be afraid of anymore. So. So yeah, there, are, there have been a lot of moments, certainly um, in actual concerts, where 
there's been a real sense of unified excitement and um, one that particularly stands out to me was the uh, finale of the Firebird Suite that we did our last spring concert in the concert hall um, right at the finale it was a really really thunderous moment um, everyone felt really excited and the music just soared and everyone was completely elated afterwards so it's moments like that that really I think bring everyone together as a group as the orchestra and you know really makes you realize why you actually come to rehearsals every week it all comes together to re achieve a fantastic result at the end. The other side of, of Kieran's um, repertory planning uh, engages with film music and it, it seems to me that this is extremely exciting and again of enormous educational value. I mean for one thing it's an obvious thing to say it but it perhaps needs to be said film cinema is the dominant art form of our day and a lot of music is written for film and a lot of it is scored and written by extremely experienced and imaginative composers. Uh, An End of the Movies 2 is a, a sequel to um, an event that happened three years ago called An End of the Movies and uh, I suppose the seed of this was um, we'd done a concert in around 2005 where we, we accompanied um, a film called Untracked by René Clair uh, from uh, 1924 uh, with a score by Eric Satie. It was uh, Satie's last completed piece of music. It was also a central point of my PhD research. So uh, this is something I was interested in generally the idea of music and film but not just uh, you know soundtrack music but also uh, music in, in silent film uh, you know how different types of music have been used you know original music by well-known composers stock music onto you know the use of uh, popular music and classical music um, integrated into uh, major motion pictures such as uh, in, the, in the films of Stanley Kubrick which is something we explored in uh, Night of the Movies the first time around when we did uh, parts of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, so the, the idea behind the, the, the Night of the Movies was that there were several approaches to music and film. One was uh, music and sound film, we'd have a sort of complete score which would form the, the essence of the soundtrack. You would have music that was written for sound film uh, and you would also have famous classical pieces that, that, were, that have been used in, in uh, motion pictures. And uh, the last concert we did Finlandia, which had been used at the end of uh, Die Hard 2. Uh, this time around, uh, the, the, the kind of the big classical piece we're doing is Night in the Bear Mountain by Mazurkski, which is um, featured in Fantasia, uh, the Disney film, and also in part of uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, we're also doing um, Fratres by Arvo Pert, which was uh, featured in recent film There Will Be Blood. Other than that, it's uh, silent film scores, uh, so it's a Laurel and Hardy uh, score and a Roadrunner cartoon, which, although is in the sound era, was essentially a silent film because it's without dialogue. Uh, and then it's this, uh, this is completed by some soundtrack pieces, uh, notably by John Williams. Musicians, regardless of, of what they do in the university, whether they're agriculture students or engineers or English students or whatever else, can have a platform to go and play in an orchestra if their instrumental playing is at that level. Uh, it is remarkable. It's a wonderful thing. Um, and it has all kinds of benefits. It brings students from across the university together. Um, it gives them a, an opportunity to, to do something co communal and collective and collaborative, um, which they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, and that has the additional benefit of you know, producing a performance of a great work of art at the end. The orchestra's first Night of the Movies concert was also my first ever concert with the orchestra, so I guess I feel some sense of sentimentality with our second Night of the Movies concert. Um, our first one went fantastically, it's received really, really well by all, so uh, hopefully we'll have a similar experience with this one. I was in, I've been playing the bassoon for a few years and I joined the college and I just wanted to see if there was an orchestra to get involved in. And then I just uh, ran Kieran and had, a, had a, an interview. That was the end of it really. Um, the highlights would have to be um, coming and meeting with everyone every Monday and um, everyone is so close and we might go for a few drinks after and there's a great social buzz about it as well. And um, should I be saying that about it? Um, yeah, and I love the final concert as well because it's always a great sense of achievement after that we've got through it. So, yeah. Well, uh, music was one of my uh, one of the things I considered doing in college until I uh, finally decided on medicine and not exactly related field. And so I was always looking at 
at different universities, seeing what sort of music they had going on, and was there any opportunity to play in orchestras to perform? So I just found out through open days and stuff like that that there was an orchestra. Got myself involved, and here we are. Um, for me, I'm studying medicine, so uh, you know we have a lot to study for it, and uh, I find doing the orchestra is uh, great. It, the more time I spend on music outside college. Um, you know, it takes away from studying, but it kind of it works out really well because I get to do this orchestra as an elective, and it, it counts towards my degree. And then also I find it great because uh, I've been in orchestras for years, and uh, I didn't pursue music, so you know I wouldn't get to see a lot of the people that I did music with over the years, and a lot of them are in this orchestra, so that's really nice to get to see each other. I, I really enjoy conducting the orchestra. Um, it's it's a it's a particular challenge working with students, and a very very gratifying one. Uh, I mean, in the main. Uh, when you're conducting orchestras, you work with three different types of people. You work with professionals, you work with amateurs, and you work with students. And they all sort of throw up different types of challenges um, and how you have to approach the music and the you know, how you program and the, the, the kind of uh, personality you show as well. You know, with professionals it tends to be a bit more matter of fact, and uh, but with students you have a bit more time because um, you would start rehearsing for a concert, say maybe you know eight, nine, ten weeks in advance of a concert. So. Yeah, more of a chance to kind of play around with the ideas and the music and talk to the orchestra about the music. And um, one of the things you get from students is a, is a particular level of enthusiasm. And probably the most gratifying thing is, is seeing how you go from not, not a great level at the outset to a tremendous level at the end. And that's a great source of satisfaction for me and for the players. Very, very good. Well, I love it. Well, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it.